so you're welcome to our class for today so you're going to start on the css fundamentals which is for week two so we are going to start so we are going to learn the following for this our saturday's class you're going to learn about what is css three methods of adding css to html what are selectors structure of css selectors type of css selectors what is specificity how to increase specificity how to use some common css properties css position <coughs> so excuse me z index and how to use it so let's begin with the first one what is css CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheet. CSS describes how HTML elements are to be displayed on the screen, paper, or on other media attributes. So, referring to the house analogy, HTML is like the structure of the house. CSS is like whatever adds beauty to the house, the painting, the tiling, the furnitures, and some and some other, and some other artistic works that has beauty to the house. So that is what CSS does. Then CSS saves a lot of work. You can control the layout of multiple pages all at once. And this is referring to a, a type of CSS called external CSS. So external CSS, external style sheets are stored in CSS file. So this is what CSS is. Is is used to style the HTML page to look arranged and um, and and to look different from is default black and white. So three methods of adding CSS to the HTML. The first type is the inline CSS. That one has to do with no selector. The internal CSS method has to do uses selectors and the Astana CSS method also uses selectors but what is selectors and why do Intana and Astana CSS needs selectors so let's go to the next slide what are selectors selectors are used to tell the browser where the CSS will be applied why because the browser is not because the css rather is not written where it will be applied now by the time we learn about the how to add the inline css then we will not see the these two difference in the moment so the next one is the structure of CSS selectors. So the structure of CSS selector looks like this. You have the selector type. And, and you have the CSS rules. So this color is a CSS property. Then the value of the, of the color property is red. So this is the type of color you want to add. So the CSS property, and this is the color. Then this line, the color and red is a style rule. Then we have more than one style rule. It's called CSS rules. So let me just imagine this uh, illustration. There, there is uh, maybe a wedding going on, and they are cooking. And the and the reception is not far from from the place where the food is being cooked. So you see, ideally, the cook will not ask where where will I serve the food. So you just know that this is the place I'm cooking, and the reception is just over there. So once they finish, we just go and serve the food. But imagine if 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 the reception is 
far from the place where the food is cooked so you notice that if the cook has not gone to that place before so he, he needs the address or he needs somebody to follow him to serve to the location where they will serve the food so the address of the reception that is what this selector type is so because the css is written outside where it will be applied it needs the selectors and the next slide you're going to see some example of css selectors so we have the universal selector the type selector the class the class selector the id selector the attribute selector the selector list descendant combinator the pseudo class and the pseudo element so before we begin to learn this type how to use this type of CSS selectors let's now begin with with this the ways we can add CSS so now we have an overview of what selector is and why we need it so let's learn how to add these types of CSS or this method of adding CSS so if we go to our HTML I have this so let me zoom in a little so I have this so I'll just add in a h1 adding CSS so if I save this I use my live server to view it on my browser so you notice I have this adding CSS so remember the default the default color is black and white so if I if I if I go back and add a p tag it's a lorem alt z to break and I save you also notice that the default color will be black and white so now let's try to use let me drag this a little so let's try to use our css to to change this color from black to red so remember that the structure of a HTML tag looks like this so it looks like the, the tag name then attributes close it then text or summon other tags then the tag name so whatever we see after the after the tag name with a space is called attributes I know attributes they are there are some extra information you give to the tag that will enhance its display or change the way it behaves so we want to use an attribute to change the way our h1 displays by giving it a color of red which is different from its default so we use a style attribute style then i put color and i put red so if i do that this is inline css so if i go to my browser i notice the color has changed to red now the browser doesn't need to get confused at, at where it will apply this css because i'm adding the css where i want it to be applied then you also notice this semicolon this is needed if i want to add more css rules so if i want to add a background color of black so you notice if I do that if I do that it it will be styled like this so this is just how to add the, the inline CSS now there are pros and cons of using your inline CSS now one of the major advantages is that uh, it has more 
power. Your brother or your brother respects it or this or CSS respects it more than internal or external. So if you make a style using your inline CSS, you cannot use internal or external to validate it. I will get to see more of that but I will start learning specificity. Then it one of its disadvantages is that it takes it takes time to write. So it, imagine I have this is not a H1, maybe it's like a P tag, and I want the same styling for all my P tags. So notice I have to copy and paste. And if I want to change something, I have to change it in all those places. So it's not it's not an efficient way to write your CSS in, in a big project. Now another disadvantage is that because I'm adding the CSS in line with with uh, my my HTML tag or within the HTML page, it will add to the overall size of my HTML page, meaning it will have an effect in the <coughs> in the speed at which my HTML loads. So there are many more disadvantages. So let's look at the uh, the next method. So I'm going to add a comment here. This is inline CSS. So you add it in line using the style attribute. But with the internal CSS, internal CSS, you use the style tag within the head tag. So I have my style tag. So now I need to start to use my selectors. So remember the structure of the CSS selectors. So if I move to the front here, so we know what selectors are. They are used to tell the browser where our CSS will be applied because the CSS is, is written separately from where it will be applied. And that is what I'm doing now. You notice that we are not already the CSS rule is different from where I want it to be applied. So let's say I want all my tags here, all of them, to have a border of black. So remember the type of CSS that we that we used earlier before we started to learn CSS. So let's look at it's called the universal selector. So if I go to my page and I want all my tags to have a color of black, so I use that. So that is the selector type. Then you put your curly bracket, then you begin to write your CSS rules. So I can have border, so one pixel solid black. So if I do that, you notice that all the tags on my page have a, a border of black. So I can also add more things. So if I want you to have a padding, so which is the space within a tag, remember the first time you saw me using this, I used it to explain to you the point that any tag you use any HTML tag can be viewed as a box. So, thinking of HTML as a box, a HTML tag as a box, if, if you want to add a space within the box, it's called padding. If you want to add a space outside the box, it's called margin. So, we can do that, say padding of 10 pixel, then the margin, which is the space outside the box of still 10 pixels. So if we do that, you notice the be a little bit of spacing. So if I go to my browser, you see it's not displaying more like this. So the borderline is not it's not too close again. So but actually what we use this universal selector to do in a real project is to reset our page. Say for instance I remove all of this and save. You notice, especially now that 
our H1 has a background of black it illustrates the points more so you notice that this H1 has some margin outside so you see the margin space outside the tag so it has that default margin so if I add this to the P tag you see that the P tag also have its own its own margin which we didn't add but that is how the browser added it just to make it a little bit to the opposite it will not be it will not be clustered so but this can be an issue when you're doing large projects or a more complex website it might be you don't want this space this is not part of the design so you don't want this space you just want it to be full so it's good when you're designing a big project you remove all the default margin and padding so that any space in your project will be the one that you injected by yourself so that gives you a measure of control so to do that we're going to put the margin or the padding first and we'll put that to be zero pixel the margin zero pixel then box sizing border box so if we do that you notice the outlook of our page has changed so you see now the heading tag is now full 100 percent and this is so any space i want to add will, will, will be the one that i injected by myself so but you know already about this pattern and margin but what does this box sizing black box actually do so to do that i'm going to use the next selector type so let's have a h2 i'll say this is heading two then let's just have some p tag let me be p tag Lauren Lauren 20 so now I want to select this my h2 using the next type of selector which is the type selector so I will select by a tag name so let's come back to the code so I'll come back here again hit my enter I'll put h2 because that is the valid tag name then I'll give it a border of 2 pixel solid blue so if I do this and go to my browser notice I have this border of blue but to make the point more clearer let me give this a width a width of 20 percent so if i do that so let me minimize so that we can not this this So since we don't have much to display so let me do them side by side so i'll bring this okay so if i do that with or 20% you notice it, it is not the way I want so if I don't want to guess the, the perfect width for it I will use a, a CSS property or a value called fit content so if I if I save that you notice it has it is not like this now what I want it to do is I want it to be at the center now when you have a width that is less than 100% and you want it to be at the center you use your margin 
auto so it will move the box now to the center now so now you know about this CSS property so let me use 30 percent so if i do this it it will look like this now i'm using this because we have a definite a a definite uh, uh, this width so this can also be 200 pixel so you see so now we have a definite width now what this box size in but our box is is doing is that i want at all time that if i have a container or a box like this and i and i i want it to be 200 200 pixel i want that the overall width even when it has a border should 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 sum up to be 200 so adding a border or the size of the border should not add to the overall width of the container so to see that in more detail notice that if i make this my border width to be 200 and i save you you notice what happened okay this is too extreme so let me use like 80 so you notice that it tried to still remain to maintain that width of 200 now you see that the border the width of the container still remains at 200 but the context inside so the the border size is entering like a pattern but not extending the overall width of the container so if i still leave it at uh, two at two pixel you will notice where it was at 200 you see the size this lab borium to add it's still the same thing when i put 80 so you see notice it's, it's still the same thing but if we don't add this box size in border box it will not do the opposite that means the width of my border can will not add up to the overall width of the container so it will not be like 280 pixel of width instead of just my 200 so if i save that you notice it has added so if you're doing a design just a 10 pixel or a 5 pixel change or add of width can cause an overflow so you don't want your border to on unknowing to you to be causing you some overflow so that is why we, we usually add this okay so now you understand why we add that when we are working on a big project so we have that now so the next type of selector so actually what does this do for us it then means if i have a duplicate whenever i add a h2 to to my body tag it will have the same styling so you see that unlike uh, the inline css where i have to copy and paste and edit i make all my edits here as long as there as long as the selector type exists within my body tag they will all have the same css so let me demo that so i go to my html So I think I need to close this. Okay, if not entered. So, so what I'm going to do now is, if I want to duplicate this, shift alt arrow down, and I duplicate this. So if I save this now, you see as many times as there's a match of H2 to have the same style i do again shift out arrow down and i save you see as many times 
as there is a match of H2. So let's say I don't want the border to be blue now, I want it to be purple. So what I'll just do is to change it in one location, purple. And you notice it changes simultaneously all at once. So this is an this is a great improvement from the inline CSS. So we want to move to the next method which is the external CSS. So to do that, which also uses selector. So we are going to continue with our types of selectors and how to use them by using the external CSS. So to do that, you create a folder called CSS. Now this is not necessary, but just to keep things organized. So I'll tap here, tap here, I'll choose my index.css. Then what I'll do now is to come here and copy everything. So I'll just cut them control X and I save. So you notice that when I save, I've lost my CSS styling. You see, those default resets has all gone out. So if I come here and add them, so in the external CSS, when you want to add an external CSS, you just have to do this. You need to create your external CSS file as with an extension of dot CSS. Then you write your CSS rules. So note this time there is no style attribute or tag. So just write your CSS as if it is within this style tag. So if I save this, you notice there is no change on my browser. And why is that? Because there is no link between my HTML and my CSS. So to create that link, we use the link tag. So I'll come, so anywhere within your head tag, so this will be external CSS. So anywhere within your head tag, you add the link tag, so then you add the path to where your CSS lives. So dot and forward slash to open the folders that are on the same level with this. So on this on, on, on this level we have the HTML and we have the CSS. So I'll enter the CSS my index. Now once I save, you notice all our CSS styling is back. So from now on we are going to be using the external CSS. And that is because the CSS styling that we have can be shared by not only by index but by other pages. So let me demo that for you. So I have my views folder, so it can be pages. Then I have about dot html. So I do my shift one. So I close this now. I do my alt z. So let this be my about. And um, just have a heading one of about me. Then I have some paragraph B Lorem. Then I have a heading two. So I just put this one as heading two. So notice if I save now and open this on my live server because I've not created a live link. That is a nav bar. So you notice this is my about me. Now if I want the same CSS styling that I that I have here to exist in my about page. Because I'm using my external style sheet, all I'll do is to come here and link. So I put my link tag dot dot and forward slash. So I'm using dot, dot and forward slash because this from our explorer you notice that my 
my about the HTML, it leaves inside my views. So if I do dot and forward slash, it's going to open only about because it's only about that is inside is my views. But the CSS I want to add is in a folder outside views. So dot dot and forward slash means go outside this views folder. And that is why as we did our it. So and that's why as I added my dot dots dot and forward slash it opens this in uh, delete of things that are outside my views folder which is all of this. So I'll choose my CSS and this. So now once I save you notice the page has been reset and my H2 has the same styling as that of my of my index page so it then means whatever I change in my index here as long as there exists a h2 there it will have the same styling so that's why it's external it can be shared by more than one page so let's move on to the next type of selector which is the class selector so you notice in this instance now all my h2 is having the same styling so what if I just want only the H1 to have on, only only the first H1 to have that styling? So what I'm going to do then is to use a class. So I'm going to change so I'm going to change instead of using the H2 which might give you so in a situation where you want all your H2 to have the same styling, then you can just use your H2. Or in a situation where you don't want all your H2 to have the same styling, then you cannot use the class selector. So we're going to use that for our P tags. So, so let's say I want this. So let me bring out the output. So let's say I want this my this my paragraph tag. To have a color of red and you know if I use my type selector it then means all my p tag will have a color of red so if I do that here and I come here and I say p color red so you notice all my p tags will have a color of red which is not what I want I just want this first one so one of the easiest way I can do it is I'll use the class selector. Now when you were using the class selector, the structure here is you add a class attribute. Now whatever value you add there, it can be Amadi, it can be anything, it can be A or B, it can be V. But whatever value you add there, to reference it in your CSS to uh, to to complete the address that your brother will look to we used to style that particular tag you add a dot before it so if it's if it's v i added as a value here i'll put dot v then i begin to style as normal so i'm going to give this a class of dot para one then i'll put it as red now you notice once i save it now you see auto styling is is not there <coughs> Sorry, excuse me. But because I've not added this address, or because this location does not exist on my body tag, so that's why there is no effect. So I'm going to close this. Then I'll come here. Now come to the p tag, first p tag, space class of para one. Now once I add, add this para one, there's the address now exists. And you notice it's not changed to red so this is how we use class and one other beauty about using class is that the the, the same class value can be shared so if i want this my h2 to have a color of red so i'll just put class para one oh, that's, that's a mistake para one so if I save that, you see this my H2 now has a color of red. 
so that is for class you can use it to control which tag gets your styling so that not all of them gets your styling just like the 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 type selector so the next one is the id selector so this id selector so excuse me is also like the class selector but the only difference one of its major difference is that the value of a class must not be more than one in a page so just like i shared this one with para one and para this p2 this first p tag has a class value of of para one h2 now has a class value of para two that will not work or that is not professional with your ID even though it will still work but it's not professional it is expected that when you're using an ID to select a tag then the ID value should be unique so the ID should be unique so if I want to style this my head into differently so I'll put this ID ID h2 so i can just use that then i'll come here you know i need to reference it so let me bring out the output so i come here and add a pound sign okay i need to reset this again so mouse and keyboard can't find my pound sign Okay, so let's test if that has worked. Okay, that has worked. So and I have access to my pound sign. So you remember I use H2. So I'll do that. Then I'm gonna add my color navy. So if I do that, you notice it changes to in a navy blue. So by the time we enter specificity, you now know the advantage of why a ID is should be another reason why it should be unique, like it should not be declared, it should not be shared by any other tag. So that is for ID. So the next one will move to the attributes selector. So the attribute selector you can use it to select a tag based on an attribute now remember class is also an attribute id is also an attribute so if i want to do the same selection here using an attribute selector the structure here is i'm going to use the angle bracket the attribute name equal to the value in quotes then my my curly bracket then I begin to select so let's do that so I'm going to put this put ID is equal to H2 then I'll put my color Navy now as I saved now So if I save before typing this, you notice that the color disappears. It's no longer navy. But once I do Ctrl Z and save, you notice the same effect. So you notice that we can use this method to select our our attribute that is a class or an ID. But you notice that this first method looks shorter in typing but in a situation where you don't want to 
select a tag by either using a class or id attribute so that means you cannot use this reference so you can, that is when you will not see the importance of using this this other method so let's say i want to select this other h2 without using a class or an id so let's do that so i'll go to my <coughs> sorry excuse me i will go to my html page the next h2 is this so i want to give it a title and i'll put it title so if i go to my browser once i hover on this you see it shows me this intent or this two it, it shows me this two tip of title but, it's, but you notice it's not working in that place so if i want to select this h2 here by using this this title attribute so what i can do to is my type i'll just copy that and go to my css and i'll put my angle bracket paste that put my put my curly bracket and say the color color should be cyan so if i do that notice it has that cyan color so that's for the attribute selector so there are more advanced way you can select that so you can learn more about that in your w3 school but it's just the basics and you will not need this type of selector unless you're too lazy to add the class or the id attributes okay so we we'll move to the next one which is the list selector so the list selector so, so let's create a list <coughs> sorry excuse me so let's look at our output so in you notice here that in order for this my paragraph tag and my heading tag here to have the same color i need to i needed to add i needed to add this para one here apart from this so i can i can do this from my css without adding this attribute from my html so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do shift or arrow down and comment the first one out just for reference purpose. So if I save that, notice we still have the same output. But if I remove this, notice the output changes. So how can I achieve this same thing by using the list selector? So from the slide, you notice to use a list selector you type in your type of selector and you separate them by comma so let's do that so what i'll do is to go to my index.css then inside is my para one all i need to add is is uh, Okay, so I need to give that h2 because if I do what I had in mind here, if I just say comma h2, that means all my h2 will not have a color of red, which is not what I want. So to do that, I need to to give this h2. A class so this is the first thing you want <coughs> so let me give it a um, so what I use now dots not dots uh, h2 so remember I have a h2 here but it's an id so id and class they are not the same type and the reference is the same so 
it will not conflict so if i do that i'll come to my css now if i put a dot here and save you notice it is not this and this that has that so that means if i want my h2 to have a different color later on i can do that here and to override this so that is how the list selector is so you can use different uh, it can be of the type selector so you can add a class and a type selector you can add class you can list everything as long as you want them to have the same css rules okay so that is for the list selector the next one is the descendant combinator descendant combinator now this descendant combinator is used to specifically style in a nested tag so so let's say i have I come here and I want to create something like like a blog so I put dot blog so I have something like a h2 and I put latest news and I put and I put my paragraph tag lorem so if I save this now and go to my browser you notice because i use a h2 here it's not styling the h2 to look like other h2 whereas this one is nested so this is a nice scenario that illustrates that when you're using a type selector you try to give it a reference actually when you don't want the same styling for for that particular tag so if it's one that you have to nest so this can also be applied to a class so let's say i i make this not to become class of para one so that means if i do this this is going to have the same styling as this but if this if this if this scenario is not what i want so i want only this one here to have to have that same styling and this one here to have that same styling so what i'll do now is this to avoid this conflict what i'm going to do here is to to let's miss so let's assume i add all of this into a new section I'll do control X and add it into a new section so I can still use my div so dot section one then I paste everything so by this you're not seeing any any visible difference so it's just a container added so if I don't want this to have a direct effect on on this my block section what i need to do now is based on the slide you notice it's telling us that to the sender selector or the sender combinator you can instruct that you to style the class of amadi as long as amadi class name exists within the chile tag so it's like a child so like this amadi must be a child of chile so still in our own situation here if i want only the p tag that will have a color of red to be a child must be a child of section one so if it's not a child of section one then the condition has failed so that means even though there's a p tag here because it's not a child of section one 
that means it should not be applied so what i will do to fix that error is if i come here to this our h2 and i put dot section one so if i save you notice you notice that the error has been what fixed so only the section only the only the para one that exists within this section one has been applied now even though even though i have i have the para one and the h2 in another different section which is the block you see is not being applied so that is your difference so this is an update to the error i had in class so you notice here i'm combining the descendant selector and the list selector now it's working here because i've added a section about around all this so if you don't add a section then using then combining your descendant your descendant combinator and your list selector will give an unexpected result just like you saw in class so this is an update okay so with that now i can now style so if i don't want this same effect okay see the same effect is also happening here so it's not actually an update you notice that I'm still having I'm still having this same styling here whereas it's not meant to be there so just like I fixed the error in class so I have to remove to prevent that you you avoid using center complete uh, uh, selector and list combinator it will give you an unexpected result so if I save that you notice that this heading to now this style will disappear okay it's not disappearing because we still need to add dot section one here so if I save that <coughs> you see it's not out so let me add this one h2 let's see if it's going to add so you see if you're adding it 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 will just cause an unexpected result so it's not good to combine them so you notice it's not working the way you want so if i want to style this block section differently so i will say only style the h2 that is in my block session to have a text align of center so it will run to the center so if i go to my css so i'll say dot blog h2 text align center so if i save that you notice the test has been aligned to the center so actually the descendant selector can be used in for a big project to avoid name conflict so it might be that you run out of names you know you run out of class names so you just use box a line this line that so if you're using the descendant combinator there will be no there will be no conflict so you, from what you have seen if you want to avoid naming conflict when you're using the same names always make sure that you have a parent tag like a son name before the actual thing that you want to style so by using this you know you you notice that there will be no conflict so this is a different son name and this is the child then this one here is a different son name and this is the child okay so that is it for for the descendant combinator so let's look at the pseudo class 
so the pseudo class is one of the be one of the behavior of the pseudo class is it does not add your CSS directly just like the other other selector type is it selects and add your CSS based on a condition based on a condition so if the condition is not met it will not apply your CSS so let's look at it using this hover so I'm going to create a list tag or it must not be a list tag so let's say I want to I want this uh, I want this I want this paragraph inside this block tag like each time I hover on it it will have a background color of black and a and a color of white then to have some default margin and padding so let's see so I have dot blog dot para one the hover so I have a background color of black then the padding of 10 pixel a margin of 10 percent all around then the color of white which is very important because you're giving it a black background so you notice I've saved and you do not see an immediate change in the paragraph that is inside the blog tag or the blog container so only when I hover you notice that is when I have the styling so to avoid this this uh, this flickering or this switching when you add a hover always make sure that the effect that change when you hover does not does not lead to uh, does not lead to adding width or height so if it has to do with that then you need to delay the way it adds that so there are two ways we can fix this so the first way is before the hover I'm going to add dot blog dot para one then this my width everything that has to do with this my width and padding so I'll just copy that just duplicate that and move them to here then I'll now remove it so at first it has the margin and padding so that when I hover it's only it's only the background color that is adding so you see the the flickering or the 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 fast toggling has stopped so if you don't want to use this method you can still comment this out so you notice if i save now you notice that then then activate this one so if i save now you notice that behavior will come again so if i don't want to use this other method what i'll do now is i'll add transition transition mm. or the type so I put four points zero point four seconds is in is out <coughs> so excuse me so if I save so you notice because of the delay you notice the flickering has reduced so if i increase it to 0 0.8 it, that means it will be so slow so so now you notice so these are just the two ways you can you can do this okay so that is that 
<coughs> so the next one is the sudo class or the last one is the, is the sudo element selector so you can use it to also conditionally add a styling so there are so many there are so many there are so many functions that you can have or there are so many uh, these properties that you can use or conditions that you can use so to find them out so you notice if I come here and I scroll down so beginning from this column you notice you can add all of this so there are so many of them you can add the first child so if you don't want to if you have more than one Peter within a container and want to style only the first child so you can use this first child the first type of the focus of so there are so many of them so at your own leisure time you can play around with them so but the one we use is hover so it's, it's also similar to the pseudo element selector the one i'll just show you is the first letter i guess yes is the first letter i can say it can also be the first line okay so so let's have another p tag here p tag so celorium so if i save that you notice it's only it's only the first one that has the hover effect but if I scroll down, this other, this other one does not have. It's only this one that has the other effect. So that's nice. So let's say I want to start this lorem. I want to start all of this first line to have its own styling as different from this. So let's do that with our CSS. So if I come to my CSS. So the same the same principle I will use. So dot blog. Now I will use uh, I have to give this a class because it's not I don't think I can add a pseudo class and a pseudo combinator at the same time. So let me not confuse. So I have a class of class of para2 so if I save that so I come here I'll say dot para2 then I can have my first line so I can give that a color of green Maybe a padding and let's see if it will work of 10%. Then font size of 20 pixels. So let's see how it will look like. So you see only the first line is tied. So you can change this to first letter. So you see only the first letter will be styled. So that is how we use so that's how we come to the end of this part of the lecture which is types of css selectors so in the next lecture we will look at specific specificity so what is specificity so let me look at how long so this is just 29 minutes <coughs> Excuse me. So, what is specificity? Now, specificity is the algorithm used by browsers to determine the CSS declaration that is the most relevant to an element, which in turn determines the property value to apply to the element 
the specificity algorithm calculates the weight of a CSS selector to determine which rule from competing CSS declaration gets applied to an element. So the core understanding of, of this statement is, is this last one. So spec specificity starts to play its role when there is CSS rule that is competing to be applied to a particular element. So let's demo that. So there are two ways that you that specificity can play or can there are two there are two conditions that you can see the effect. So it has to do with the CSS type. So if I'm using inline CSS, remember it says here that it calculates the weight. So when there is a when there is a conflict of 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 a CSS rule, so, so let's say I have a H1, I've already added a color of red to my H1. So the H1, the inline, because it's more specific, has the highest point of 100. Let's assume 100. Then if I also want to change that H1 using a <coughs> sorry using an internal CSS it has that of 50 so it, because this one has a a point of 50 and this one has a point of 100 and this is the same CSS property that, that I want to change that means I cannot override using my internal CSS because 100 is greater than 50 so if I do something with my internal I, I can use my external to override it so that is for that so there's also another area where you can see that which has to do with the the selectors you use the type of of selector you use so before i demonstrate this let's let's play around with this so you notice on the output on the screen here you notice that i use the inline CSS to style this H1 to have a color of what? To have a color of red. So let's try to use my external CSS. Now remember from the slide, the external CSS has a list point of what? 10. So you cannot, theoretically, you cannot override the work done by an inline CSS. So let's see if that is actually true. So I'll move to my H. I'll move down and say H1. Please have a color of blue. So if I save that, let's see the effect. You see, there is no effect. Now, why is it that the inline CSS is taking? is having more effect than the external CSS even though I put uh, the H1 down. So this is because code execution starts from top to bottom. So cascading style sheet, it starts from the outermost style sheet to the innermost style sheet. So remember the external CSS is a way so to check. So code execution starts from top to bottom. So by the time I want to execute this code, it will start from, from here to execute. So once it enters this H, once it enters this heading tag, it's going to it, it's, it's going to come here. And if there is an internal CSS CC, it's going to apply it. So now if there is an external CSS, which is, which you have now, it's going to apply it. So what actually happened behind the scene is that by the time it gets to the external CSS, it has applied a color of blue to the H1. Then by the time it now enter by the time it's now enter the body tag, you now see that there is already an attribute that is adding the color of of red and the background color of black. So 
that is why the, what you see at the output is what is red because the last CSS it applies is is this one because of that cascading stuff. So that is how specific. So that specificity has to do with how specific is your CSS or is your selector. So if it's more specific, then it will have more preference. But if it's less specific, then it will have less preference or less effect. So that is for the selector type. So you, you see that I cannot use an external CSS to change the work that is done by an inline CSS because of that. So let's move on to the next one which has to do with for CSS selectors assume that ID has 100 points then the class has 20 points a tag name 10 points universal selector has like a point so you notice that I explained earlier that in a HTML document the ID value should not be shared so because it is meant to be unique so that's why CSS gives it more respect so that means if I add a CSS styling by using an ID, I cannot use a class to override it. I cannot use a tag name. I cannot use universal selector. But if I use any of these to add a CSS, I can use my ID to do what? Override it if I want to. But if they have the same points, then the code that is below will override so let me show you that so that is one i'll show you so you notice i have so you you will notice here i have let me look at the one we've done, we've done before Okay, so you so you notice here I have this color of of purple. And let's say I come down here, shift out arrow down, shift out arrow down, and I change this now to to good. So if I save, you notice because because this one uh, is at the bottom because code execution starts from top to bottom so it will apply this as purple but only come here to apply this as what as good so that's why this one is but now let's look at this specificity so the next one how to increase specific specificity <coughs> it says select using descendant selector so now you notice from the previous slide notice that the class has 20 points and the, and the tag name has like 10 points so in my css if, because i added this color of h2 with a descendant selector so it has 30 points so if I come down here and say the H2 now should have a color of gold. I mean the border should have a color of bold. Now even though code execution is from top to bottom, but you notice there is now a conflict. I'm adding the same thing. Or I want to change the same thing. Border and border. So scissors will now use the width. So you just have 10 points. I want to change the work that has been done by by a, by this which has the 30 points. So because of this uh, this width or these points that you use, even though this one is at the bottom, you still see the output as purple because this guy has more points. It's more specific. So if I if I save now, you notice. So if I save now, wrong. So what is 
so if yeah so notice if i save now you notice that the purple here does not change but it, it rather it changes only in this one here that there is no conflict but for this one that that there is a conflict you notice is a purple that still gets applied so that is how so that is what <coughs> specificity is and how to avoid it so it might be when we do a we are doing a big project you might forget that there's something that is like that exists that is called specificity so that means for my style a tag by using this i will try to use just this one to 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 style it i will say this is this thing is not working i know i am right it's not working so all you need to remember that there's something called specificity and you cannot just change it like that so The next one that I want to learn is is how to use the following. So we now know how to use the padding and margin, but there's something else I want to show you that has to do with the margin and padding. So when you're using your margin and padding, just remember this. So for your margin or slash padding. When you use like 10 pixel, it just means that you're applying that means that you're applying so if I use this as margin slash padding. So it, because what I want to write applies to both of them. So that means you're applying it to the top, to the left to the right and to the, on the left top right bottom left so you are applying it in all four corners then when you use two values you use if you use 10 pixel and you use 20 pixel so it that means it that means this so that means your margin slash your padding you're adding it to the top so the first value is top and bottom then space in that value is left and right so so if I don't want my padding to be the same in all four directions, I can use this, I can use this shortcut. So if you use one, then if you use three, it will decide whether it's top, right, bottom or left. So if you just want a padding for, so this one also applies <coughs> to, to both margin and padding. So let's do something, so let's say this is type I will say is equal to so this type can be it can be top or it can be right or it can be bottom or it can be left so if I want to use a shortcut I can put margin then I'll put my type then column and I put 20 so it that means 20 pixel <coughs> it that means <coughs> so I can also do the same thing margin of padding so if I put here just the margin type which is <coughs> sorry which can be top right left or bottom it will apply to that same type so let's demo this a little so i have so let's have a new tag <coughs> so let's have the h3 here so h3 have the heading 3 so if i come here because this is my heading 3 is inside my section 
is inside my blog section so dot blog h3 so let's give it a background color of purple so if i bring out the outputs and save so so you notice we have this so let's give it a color of white so if i save you notice we have that so let's say i want it to have a space top and bottom or all around so i'll say imagine 20 pixel so you notice it will have that space top and bottom so 20 pixel in all four directions so if i want it to have so I'll comment that out. So if I wanted to have a margin, the top and bottom, the top uh, and bottom should be should be 10 pixel, and the left and right should be 20 pixel. So you notice now the spacing will be different. So you see that the height is no longer the same. So if I do this to five, you notice it will go even more closer. So you, see, so, you, so you see notice so it's also the same thing with 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 the padding so if i put my padding top which is the type now i put 20 pixel you notice there will only be a padding top of what 20 pixel then if i don't want to use the shortcut or all this long cut i cannot use padding padding the top and bottom should be ten pixel the left and right should be five pixel so if i do that notice it will look like this so that's about the margin and padding so the next CSS that I want to learn is the border. So, so we already know how to use the border. So if I want to use the background color here, I can add the border of two pixel solid red. So you can mix this any height. So it can be red can be rest only two pixels so anyhow you, you rearrange it but what you know that is to give you a border so that is how we add border and if you want it if you want the text to show we have to change the color so that is how we add border then you, it, it then this border has a type of solid groove and dash so i think you see me using all of those the next thing is the border radius so the border radius is used to add curves around a container so let's say we don't want this thing to have a sharp edge so we can do that using the border radius so border radius of 20 pixel so you see it's not looking like this so if the width and height is the same once you add a border radius of 50 percent to give it a perfect circle so that is for that so the next one is is our, our box shadow so let's say we do not add this our background color here yeah. and let's say this our color still remains dark green change it to something so if I save, I'll have something like this. So let's say I still want it to stand out, even without using border and background color. So I can use my box shadow. So box shadow, zero pixel, zero pixel, four pixel, black. So if I save that, you notice this. So it, you see, it makes the heading stand out even without using a background so the first parameter here has to do with uh, the horizontal 
elevation so if I, I make this turn you notice how it changes so if I leave it at 0 and change this to to 10 you notice how it changes so this is horizontal this is the vertical then this is the spread radius so you notice if I change it to 14 you notice the radius will be it, it will be more spread if I change it to 104 you know see how you notice how it looks like so that is it for box shadow okay so the next one is the is is is, is the text transform so you can use css to to transform your text so let's say i want all of this text to be uppercase so text transform to be uppercase so if I do that you notice everything is now uppercase so if I want it to be small letter you can use the lowercase so that is how easy it is then the next one is the text align so if I want the text to be at the center text align center this is at the center if I want it to be right I'll put right but by default it is left then the next one is is the background image so you can use CSS to add background image even without the image tag so I'll have another section here which I will call dots gallery then I have dot img so one of the beauty about using the, the background image is that I can use it to add background images to multiple containers at the same time so if I save this I duplicate this to four or, or, three, or, or three places so let me add a background image so I'll look for an image in my machine on my desktop and add it here so, so what I'll do is I'll create a folder here I'll call it images then I'll drag so when I look at the image And drag them and let me see let me see <coughs> pictures let's do the same thing so let me just use this one so I'll drag dump it at image so this is a screenshot from a a react project so we are going to add that so one of the things you need to remember when you're adding a background image to a container is that if the image does not have a text inside it must have a width and a height so let me demo that for you so let's say i do lorem here so in, you notice know that this text now is going to give this this first image a width and a height. So that means if I want to add my background image to look like something like this. So I'll have dot gallery. First of all, I want to give it a width of. 80 percent and give it a border of 10 pixel grooved good then I want to give it a margin so the margin top and bottom should be 20 pixel left and right should be auto so that means it to center the container 
so if we do that we have this now let me now I want to target the, the images inside so dot gallery dot img so I add background image url then dot dot and forward slash so I have to put it in a single double quote so dot dot and forward slash in my images and I choose this so notice if I save now you notice I'm seeing the background image but remember from our markup here we have three of them but you see only this one is coming up because since these two are empty so your brother just is like omit uh, at putting them or it has puts them but there's nothing to show that they are, that they are there so it tie the same effect so if a container you want to add a background image does not originally have a width and a height then you will not see your images so to see your images I have to come down here and give all the images inside my gallery a width of be 100 pixel and a height of 100 pixel so if I do this you notice I have my three images so you notice that the images is like it's too uh, is even repeating and is is having some other is not displaying well so I'll use another one background size to control the size I'll say contain so what Ever size this image is it to compress to f to display in a smaller version within the conference or within the scope of this width and height. So if I save, you notice you're seeing the image. This so you notice that it's repeating one two is one box, one two is another box, one two is another box. So to avoid that repeating, <coughs> excuse me. So background repeat no repeat so if I do that you notice the image it's not displaying like so so now let's say I want all the images to be at the center so that is if I give them a width of 100% or let me make it 500 so you notice how it looks like so if I give this image a border, so you see the position border two pixel blue solid. I'll use solid. So let me use dash. So you notice the width is is even bigger than that. So if I want the width to adjust to fit within this conference here so I'll use max width so you notice it's not like this so if I want this image to be at the center of this so what I'm going to do now is use my uh, background position and I'll put center so the image will jump to the center so if you don't want to use this content to compress the image to fit in within the available container you can use cover so now I'll just stretch the image and it will look somehow odd so you see then if you don't want to use that one you can use 100 100 percent so you notice it's still like the cover but I can decide how stretch I want it to be so I can say 80 so you see how it is okay, I can say I want it to stretch up to 80 but the height should stretch up to 100% or the width should stretch up to that which might which you might not see any visible difference so you see so if I break this to 50 
so you know it is this so these are just some of the things that you can that has to do with the background image so this URL here can be one from online so once you paste it here this it will still have the same effect so now the last one for this Saturday's class is the font family so let's say you want to add let me connect my internet so let's say I want to add a different font family to this so you notice all this font family they are they are having a default type let's say I want to change that of of the para 2 to look differently so I can do that by using some default font family that we have that we have here so so what I will do here so let me since I'm doing go to the bottom I'll put dot log dot para two so I'll put font family so I'll choose this area because it's somehow tick so if I do that you notice the font family is it's different from this so what if you want to add one that is not the default so if I if, if I remove this and put a vertical you notice it changes I think the default is sans serif so which is somehow related to this so there are so many of them but what if excuse me so what if you want to add maybe this one so you see so the one that is being affected it is Tahoma so depending on the one that the system has so these are built-in font font families so let me use this one okay so now what if I want to add a custom one that is not within the free one that comes along with your browsers by default so let's say I want to add a, a custom one so I'll go to my browser so I'm going to type here Google fonts type Google fonts So I'll look for the, I'll just look at the search Google font. So I'll look for one that, by the time we add it, we'll know that we've added a font family. So you can add a font family. As, as a default for your entire project. So I can decide to use this banner Nova C as the general font family of my website. So if I if I tap on it, I will do what I'm going to get the font. Then I'll, I'll click on get embed code. Then I'll scroll down. I'll copy this URL then go to my index.html because this is a CDN which is a content delivery network so I tap here to easily scroll up then below my CSS I paste it so if I save I will not see any visible difference now if you're having prettier 
installed you will see check like this so to format this document i'll choose format document with i'll choose my prettier and that should format it like this so the next thing i want to do now is to add the font family you, you add this bona novas sc like this then you add a fallback which is the font family which is this setup so if i copy the whole of this ctrl c then i save this one no not that i save this one then i come here remember where we did our reset because i want to add it to the entire website come here i paste so that means all my css will now have this new font family if i save so you notice it it has changed so you see all my website has gotten that font family but you notice before it could download it it uses this serif which is a generic name for is it sans serif this or that okay so now let's say i want this my h2 now to have a different font family from from still online so i can still go back to my search to go back and let's look for one that is that is fancy okay i like this one so it can be anyone but just to say so this one is playwright france mod then so let's look for another one hmm, i like this one so you just to illustrate the, the point so the same process get embed code then I'll come here, I'll copy the CDN, go to my index, click enter within my bot the tag, within my head tag rather, paste that, save. So if I want to, you notice it's not styled correctly, it's not aligned correctly, so I have to format that. So if I choose format, it's going to format it using my default. code formatter so I'll choose configure I choose my prettier so you're going to format that for me so it's not appearing nice so now the next part now is I want to use this in my CSS to style only this section so what I'm going to do now is to save this first of all. So put my cursor here, save. Then come back here. So let's look for. So if I remove this and put this, notice what we're going to have see the font family has changed to this okay so that is it for the class so you see that the other the entire web page has the first font family i've added this other one has a different one okay so that is it so in our next class okay no we have not done so the next one is css positions so css position so let's take this css positions i'll take it don't take long and we'll end the class 
so after success position is the z index then we'll end the class so the previous one is for css positions. so what are css positions you use css positions to to uh, decide to move your uh, to move a html tag from is the first position so you can use the position to move to the left to the right and the position that we have been using is is the static position so that means if i if i place a tag at the top it always appear at the top so if you look at our markup here we call this heading one is placed at the top so that is why if we go to the output of our browser you notice that the heading one is placed at the top so that is static wherever you place it that is where it will always appear on the browser so but if you look at the rest type of position which is relative from relative to sticky they respond to to top left right and bottom so let's begin to explore this so the relative position respond to to, to left top right and bottom means i can move it around by using those css rules so i'll come here I'll put dot relative so i'm going to add a text so lorem so if i save this on my browser you're going to see that we have this we have this lorem so the next thing i want to do now is let's just give it a border so let's go to our css so i will know it's the boundary dot relative so give it a border of two pixel solid so if we save it will assume that the color is black so if you don't want to add the black so leave it like that so next you say the relative respond to top left and bottom so we'll add a position of relative then if i want it to go to the left so left now instead of using margin and padding you can use this one so before the left and right or bottom or top will work there must be this line of code must be here which is relative so i put left 10 pixel so you notice it has caused an overflow because of that 10 pixel so i want you to go to the top pixel so it will move 20 pixel away from the top so you see so it's taking its, its reference from the place where it resides originally so that is for the relative position so i'm going to remove this left and put it at zero so that the overflow will not be there nice but the top let's leave it up there so the next one is the absolute position the reference it takes will it dependent on two things so let me do the markup first so i'll use that to explain so let's say i have the this is the i have a parent tag parent tag <coughs> Then inside my parent tag, I need a, a child class, a, 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 a child container with a text of child. So if I hit enter, I'm going to have this. So that is just a VS Code shortcut. So if I save that, 
you notice I'll be seeing this on my browser now because of this position you see there's an overflow there so let's it's not displaying the way we want it to display so let's also remove this top so that it display nicely so you see we are not seeing the child now that's nice so the next thing that I want to do now is what I want to explain is if you give this child a position of absolute the the place it take its reference will be different so if I give this child a position of absolute to take its reference as the entire body tag so if I give it a position of absolute and say top to run to the top so instead of you to see it maybe here you're going to see it at the top here but if I want it to take its reference as this at this parent tag then I have to give the parent tag a position of relative then only then will this child tag take its reference to be this to be this parent so it, it, it will take care to be his home rather than taking the entire body tag to be his home so that is just how it works for absolute position so let's try that so first of all let's target the parent so dot parent I'll give it a margin of 20 pixel 20 pixel a padding of 10 pixel then border of red solid so if I do that I'm going to have something like this so let's also make the child stand out so, so dot parent dot child background color should be black the color should be white the width should be fit content so that it's not be so long then let's add a bit, little bit of padding the padding should be 5 pixel then a, bit, a little bit of border radius border radius so all these styling they are not necessary just to make it look nice 5 pixel to so to give it a curved edge so we have something that looks like this now if I give this a position of absolute So you, so, you, so you notice let's see if something happens you see beginning from there is is beginning to misbehave so it will be misbehave more if I give it a top of 10 pixel so just like I explained it will take its home or its reference point as the entire body tag which just includes here so instead of you to see this man maybe at this top you're going to see it uh, at the top here so if I save you will notice you see it here and let's try to add in this parent let's give it a height of 200 pixels so let's see can you notice it's still there but this guy has a height of this so if I want it to take this parent tag as his reference rather than the entire body tag which is what I want in the situation so I'll give this simply a position of relative relative so once I do that you notice it takes its reference as the parent tag so now I can move this child around so I can put here left is already at the left right 20 
20 pixel so to move to the right 20 pixel i can move here to be bottom so to move like that to the bottom so the, so that's how we can move this around so the next one that i want to do is has to do with the fixed position so this one is used to always keep a tag fixed no matter where the user is close to so to do that let's create the markup for that so let's use dot fixed then i have i have um, an anchor tag i put my hash here i put my up then i put top so if i save this i'm going to be seeing top here so if i click here you see nothing happens but it's my intention to if i click here it moves at the top but before that let's tie this so i put here dot fixed so i'll give it a position of fixed then give it a width of um, a width of fit content then a padding of Of 20 pixel so that will make it to be centered then a background color of green so if I save that that is what we have we have something the guy has already moved to the top so let me comment this then I need to give it a, a, a width and height so the height should be 50 pixel so let me remove this position of fix first so that we can style it yes so we have something like this so I can make this to be 20 pixels still. This is to be too small. So this will be 50. I think I'll use the one I used before. I wanted, to, I wanted it to be a perfect circle. Fit content. Okay, so we have this now. Then, if we don't add a height, I think it will still show. Yes. So, we have that. Right, so we can add something like a border radius. I will put a. If you try to get a perfect circle with 50%, it might not be what we want. Let's see. Okay, almost what we want. Okay, so the next thing is the text has to stand out. So we'll put our dot fixed a I'll put color the color should be white then to remove the underline you say text decoration should be none so it, it text should be white now 
and this so i want if i click this it should take me to the top but first of all let's get down with the position so i put position fixed so let's see what happens you see it disappears and it will not appear unless you tell it whether it's top left or right so top so i put bottom 20 pixel right 20 pixel so that is going to apply here yeah, you see no matter where i screw you see it's fixed so now let's activate this one that if i tap it it will move to the top so to do that remember i added an id a hash and a value of up in this hedge drive so this up here has to be an id and this id will, will determine where to stop when it's scrolling so as it's scrolling from top to bottom wherever it sees an id of up it to stop there so let's come to the top part here it can be our h1 which is here i'll give an id of pop so the effect will be once i click this now to take me to the top okay, that's nice so if i scroll down click see top so with the same principle you can reverse engineer it so if you click something here yeah, to take you down but just know that what you click the place where this will click must be an anchor tag but the place where to stop must not be an anchor tag it just needs to have this id after this pounds okay so the last one is or, or the last for the position is the sticky position so so for that one I, let's say I have let's say I have hmm, let's say I have enough tag here I have enough and I have a paragraph of some text loading. Loading. So if I save this. I save this and go to my browser you notice I'll have this text so let's say I want this nav so let's start the nav nav with the color of white background color of blue then a padding of 10 pixel so if i do that i'll have this now so let's say i want if i screw if i screw then this now should remain fixed and this guy should just disappear so actually the fixed position the sticky position it toggles between relative and fixed so let's try to do that so I'll give it a position of sticky then I'll give it a top of zero zero pixel and let's see what happens so you notice now once I screw, you notice it becomes fixed. So whatever was on top becomes 
visible after you scroll down so it might be that this is a reminder so let's test so I can put this inside I do control X I have an article so I have a h3 I put remind I save so this is like a this is like a reminder but when I save you see the this reminder is off so I can add in my h3 so this h3 can be reminder class Okay, it's not compulsory. I give it a class, so I can just come here, style it differently. So I can put my article. You have the margin. You just put a padding of ten pixel. Then text align should be center then the h the article inside my article the h3 should have a color of red just to stand out or if you want to use red i can use crimson so you notice how it looks now so you see it stands out then about when I scroll, you see the reminder goes off. So this, this so this is a situation where you might need to use the sticky position to effect something like this. Okay, so that is how we almost come to the end of the class. So the the last one is the Z index. So the Z index, what it does is this. It determines how tags will be stuck on top of each other if they are brought close together. So let me create a markup to demonstrate that. So I'll go to my browser. So I'll say dots cards. So inside here I have dot red shift out arrow down so I'll change this to blue and I'll change this to cyan so if I save so let's go to the CSS so dot cards I want to give this a margin of 20 pixel all around then a height of 200 pixel then we can just add the border just for reference border one pixel so let's see what happens when I have to show the border so it will not show unless you specify the type or the color. So let's use black. So it didn't show. So use solid. So let's use dashed. So now it's showing good. So now let's go to the the card inside. So I have a red card. So dot so dot cards dot red. So I want to give it a width of 100 pixel and a height 
or 400 pixel but the background color now be red so if i do that notice what we have here red so let's do the same thing for the, the next two cards so shift out arrow down one two so this would be would be for my what do we use blue then hold your alt you tap here it should be for my cyan so if we do that you notice what i'll be seeing i'll be seeing these three stuffs so let's now apply position so let's say i want this one to have a position of absolute of course i want this to have a reference within the the card con the cards container so it needs to have a position of relative good so now absolute and i put top zero pixel then left should be 10 pixel so if i save that notice it's looking like this so next i still want these same things here so i do control c come down here i paste so if i paste the same thing so the question is where are all the other containers so they are within but because this one is a last based on the markup it it is it that is why it's on top but using z-index now you remember z-index is used to determine how tag are stacked on top of each other when they come close to each other so now by using the z-index i can decide oh i want the red to be at the top so i'll use z index and i'll put one so by default all the tags have a z index of zero that means they will have the same level but when you're using the fixed position it has a very high index very very high so that it it, it will always float on top so if i put this one now uh, you notice that the red becomes at the top so i come down here <coughs> i put a z index of two you notice it is not becoming it did not become the blue the other ones are stuck inside because this is one and this is two so if i come here and add a z index of three so it will now look like the first one the cyan will be stuck so let's now change this a little so let me make this blue to have a top of 20 pixel on the left of 60 pixel so if i do that notice what will happen so it's not showing something like this then the next is i'm having a top of 40 pixel and a left of 100 pixel so if i do that that is what will happen now so you see so this yarn is stuck on top as the highest one because it's having the highest index so if i make this left to be 40 that is how it will look like now so let me make it zero mm -hmm. so it's not perfect so you notice that this one uh, this cyan card is having is stuck on top both this and this because this one has a z index of three two and one so if i want the red to stand out so what i'll just do since this one is already three this one is two that means i'll change this one to what to four so if i change it to four you notice the red is not stacked on top so that is 
how we use the z-index and from what i've done here you notice now that for you to use the z-index you must have a position of either relative or absolute but the fixed on its own has a very high z-index so even though i move this thing so let's test that so this is what i mean by playing around so let's say i move this now to instead of top to be bottom so all my top so ctrl d ctrl d uh, i need to start from the first one which is my card so control D control D is this so I'm moving this to bottom then the next thing I'll do is to change this to right so let me change this to right to D to D right so let's see if this will have a higher Z index so you see it does not have a high set index but by default because these other ones have a, a high z index of of a, of zero zero then this one probably has a z index of one or two and the highest here which is four is above it so if you want your fixed position to have a very high z index so what I can do now to give it that is uh, to come here to my fixed and give it a Z index of very high number. I put nine 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 something so high. So by that it will always be on top of anything that is on the page so that is it for the css positions and with that come to the end of the class